Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about how to safely use input parameters to supply the values of things like table name, column names, and other SQL objects in your dynamic SQL queries. Last week we discussed how to protect our dynamic SQL queries using SP Execute SQL. There's one problem with that though. SP Execute SQL doesn't work for parameterizing table names, uh, the columns in your select list, if you're dynamically building all of the conditions in your on clause. And honestly, when I use dynamic SQL, a lot of the time that's what I want to do. That means we have to fall back to appending our input parameters to our SQL query string and using execute to execute that SQL statement. Let's take a look at how to do that safely. The first option I want to stress is just do as much as you can in your application layer. If you have a web page that's accepting in user input, do your string cleaning, your string sanitizing there because you're gonna have way more flexibility and control in that application layer than you do in SQL Server. Option two is to use SQL's quote name function. Quote name adds delimiters to your input parameter values. It adds brackets by default and by escaping any single quotes in your string, it prevents injection attacks from happening. It's limited only outputting 128 characters though, so you gotta keep your input parameters short. If you need longer input parameter strings, you can either write your own delimiting function uh, or use something like replace to replace all single quotes with double quotes. Finally, you wanna do some damage control. The account that's executing your dynamic SQL statement should have restricted access to your database to begin with, right? If your dynamic SQL is just selecting data, it shouldn't have access to insert, update, or delete, or truncate, for example. If you can't restrict the access to the account running your dynamic SQL, what you can do is use execute as to specify another account to run the dynamic SQL under. That second account will have really limited access to your database, so when it executes that dynamic SQL, it's not gonna be able to do anything that a malicious user would maybe want to try to do. Now using execute as with that secondary account isn't gonna prevent SQL injection, but it will prevent the amount of data that you know a hacker or attacker can access. And that's it. Hope you're now better prepared to protect your dynamic SQL queries from SQL injection attacks. Thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe below if you haven't already, and I'll see you next week.